small freezer, blue, cane five. So, I mean, basic, you know, different labs have different things they put the size for cell culture, and some are more careful about it than others, and depending. Um, you know, we try to keep it clean, but it's, it's, it's sort of on the dirty side in terms of cell culture. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we tend to have problems with fungus in this building, so we always include a fungicide in our culture media. Okay. So, Arvind, I had Arvind plow some uh, FPS stocks and some pens, penicillin streptomycin, fungicide stocks we keep up here. Uh, I had him plow some of those last night in the 4C just to get a head start on things. I'm going to try out that strip So, this is the. the just abbreviated PSF for penicillin streptomycin fungicide, mm -hmm. just and B, and then this is a 50 ml aliquot of FBS, uh, fetal blood wind serum. So we're going to do uh, a 10% concentration of FBS in these uh, in this media. Uh, so I already I, I just took a head start, warmed up the media, mm -hmm. um, and then what we'll do is we'll we'll aliquot it out once I add the, the components. So basically, you know, we store the media in the 4C just to help preserve it, especially, especially the antibiotic, antimycotic, and the FPS and some of the other components as well. Uh, but you don't want to hold media to the cells, right? It's going to shock up. Right. Happy. So, you know, warm it up in the in the bead bath or the bead warmer for about a minimum of 10 minutes, uh, depending on how you know you can do it for longer. Um, if you want to be really careful about it, you want you can aliquot the amount of media you're going to use beforehand first to like a conical tube and then warm it up. Um, especially if you're going, if you need to go in and out multiple times, so you're not going in and out of the media bottle, and also to speed up the, the warming process. So uh, we can use this one right here. Uh, just make sure you open up to the where the arrow is. Right. For the slash slope wall, it's going to start beeping at you. This one here. Is a little trickier sometimes, even if you're up to this level here, it'll beep at you, so you have to turn the alarm off, even though know, things are okay. Mm -hmm. So, open up the cell culture hood, we have bottles with 70% ethanol. Unfortunately, the spray, the spray there, they're sort of disintegrating, and the spray heads don't work so well, so uh -oh. this one just sprays a lot of ethanol everywhere. Uh, so, anytime you open up the hood, spray it down. Anytime you put anything into the hood, you spray it down. Right. Uh, this is spray. This guy is pretty warm. It should be warm enough. Let's spray that down. So, a lot of different tools in here, instruments, everything like that. But that's we try to keep separate pipettes for the tissue culture room so that they don't we don't mix in with the outside. Uh, spray that thing down. Just some markers. It usually is, this can be better organized, but it's not that well organized right now. Okay, so this should be good for that. Um, so like here is cell filters. We need to filter anything for different things. These are different tips and tools. Uh, we probably definitely probably use this as like two holders and um, yeah, different holders. Get a holder for this and in there. My pet tips for tissue culture in here. Let's get some few and thousands and um, tissue tubes yep. right here. Uh, so in general, unless they're out of the sterilizer, they that sterilize the uh, out of plate tape will turn black. Yep. Um, I like to keep if something that I'm keeping sterile. I like to keep this out of plate tape on it just so I know that. Yeah. And then if I take this out and use the pet tips out of the main lab, I just take this out just so I know they're no longer sterile. Sterile, only open up inside the hood, right? Okay. Uh, for the pipe betters, the, the large pipe betters, um, we keep the main stocks in here, but we have on either side of the hood, we have you know, the individual ones. Some conical tubes here, we should have stocks of 15 and 
15 and 50 mil. Um, if we run out here, we should keep more in the lab in various places, sort of have to hunt around, and then if it gets low, we need to order more. So we use this to um, also mix up the media. We'll pour some in there and use that to um, deliver this, this, uh, the cells that we've got. Down here, um, balances for the centrifuge. This is where we keep the cell culture flasks. Uh, if we run up out of flasks, we keep the boxes out there, right outside the door in that area out there. Okay. And we probably can some of those. Okay. And then, let's see if we Okay, so then once you move in the tissue culture room, you know, spray your gloves, smack them off, rub your hands, and try to avoid, you know, if you come in here, in normal times we'd say change your gloves, put on a new pair of gloves. You might be running low on gloves because of COVID, I don't know, I mean, just, you know. Oh, okay. You want to, you don't want to go out and use the same gloves you're using to use chemicals in the synthesis room to use the tissue culture. I mean, it's good practice to keep it separate. And within reason. Okay, so I'm gonna make the media now. So typical media, cell culture media, 10% FPS. So this is a 500 mils of media, which would be 50 mils of FPS. Some people do a true 10% and they draw 50 mils here. So then when they add that in, it's, it's actual, you know, the FPS is 10% of the total solution. I, you know, I just add it straight in there. I find it doesn't make a difference, and then you have a little bit more media. So in, in technicality, whatever 50, 50 is of 550, it's, you can do, I, I can't do the math in my head anymore. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a little less than 10%. Same thing with this. This is 5 mils going into here, so we could take out another 5 mils and it would be 1%, but I just add it in. So, I mean, it's a little less than that. And if something happens to the media, you're not sure it's in good shape, you may be concerned that it got contaminated. We have um, big uh, vacuum filter flasks with, where you can sort of, you, you hook it up into here and you pour it through a very, you know, a, a micron filter and filter that out. Uh, but usually you just keep things in the bottle here. All right. going to use, you know, good technique or not, you know, not touching the tip of the pipette, leaving it in there, just opening the top, mm -hmm. putting that in. And then some people are very particular about how you put the caps down. I like to put them down like this, just in case I don't drop anything into the inside of them and this bottom should be clean. So that's, that's my rationale for keeping the tips down, mm -hmm. the caps down. Um, always keep everything inside of the, you know, inside of the air venting here. All right. So I'm going to go in and just... So theoretically, you could just tip this cap, tip this tube over into there. Um, but just to avoid, you know, getting whatever might be on the outside of the, um, the cap onto the inside of the bottle there. I'm going to transfer by pipe that.
Alright, so if I want to reuse this pipette, just very carefully sort of thread it back into the, uh, into the uh, packaging there. Right. Alright, so now we're going to do PSF. So it's KL. Lots of initials there. Okay. So date is important because the longer the media sits around, certain components sort of lose their potency. Mm -hmm. uh, one important one is the glutamine. So this has glutamax in it, which is a glutamine supplement. I typically every, if it's been sitting for two weeks or every two weeks, I add fresh glutamax just to, to do that. Uh, and we have 100x Budamax on top of the fridge over there, and we should. It's a little bottle that we can put. If you don't have any, I'm picking up the bottle stores. So, yeah, I'm going to make a note. Uh, it's Budamax. out how much media I'm going to use for that. So there's a lot of different ways you can do that, do the thaw. Uh, but basically the cells are thaw, are frozen in media plus DMSO. Uh, and right. the DMSO is the crowd protectant, prevents the cells from bursting. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also toxic, you know. So what we want to do as soon as the cells are thawed in the cryobile, dilute it into media, mm -hmm. dilute out the DMSO. Um, so I'm going to do 20 mils here. So if your cells are very sensitive, uh, what you can do at that point is spin down this tube with the cells and everything in it, uh, draw off that, and then add fresh media before plating. These 3T3 are pretty hardy. Um, so I think diluting in this and then plating them right away should be OK. So I think that's what we're going to do today. OK. So that's ready. I mean, if this at this point, then you could, if this is right up in the uh, the four C, you can put this into the the V bath for you know, ten or so minutes or a little bit more um, to warm up. Uh, if you're moving this around, there's other people in the lab. It's a good idea to to uh, label it. Okay. And I'm just gonna set this up and get it ready to go just because you want the next part when you're buying cells to go pretty quickly as soon as they're bought, get them diluted right away. Right. Okay. Okay. So now we're ready for that. Um, now I'm going to go in and grab the cells from the freezer and then start thawing them right away. There's a couple different ways you can thaw them. Uh, you can put them into the bead that into the bead uh, warmer. It's pretty slow. Uh, I like to thaw under running water and turn it on to hot to heat it up. And the only downside is that you know if there's not a good seal on the cryo vial, theoretically you could get you know tap water in there and that's bad. yeah, not not good. Going to burst and would be contaminated. I haven't had that problem, uh, and I'd rather just get the thaw quicker than slower. So I do that and then I just spray it down really well and move it in. So over here are our cryo containers over here. I'm gonna go to the little one back there. We have 
gloves there if you need to really fix this and you know, extended time touching things or handling things. I'm going to go pretty quickly, so I'm just going to go in and grab what I need. They also don't really fit very well over the gloves, so I try not to use them. But, you know, what do as I say, what do as I do as well. Yeah, sure, yeah. Hopefully this works as well as we get any problems with getting things in and out. A lot of times it's hard to move in and out or things sort of things fall off or in there and they get in the way of the hands going back in, so we'll see how this goes. Okay, so the color codes on the spreadsheet were referring to the tape? Yep. They uh, refer they're referred to this part up here. And then these are like the containers and then when you get within each container there's up to like five the long metal things which are the canes. Mm-hmm. And then you take it out, we should remember to update the spreadsheet so that we know that we remove one of these wrong later. Look for it as it's later. This one was partially wasn't pulled down all the way to cap. But. All right, so this one was frozen in media, and I can tell that just because it's. I think since I freeze my own cells in FDS, so it's a little more yellow. Uh, but what we try to do is keep a close eye on it as it's thawing, and basically you want to stop this process when there's still a little bit of ice left, like a little right. ice crystal, and then move it over. Um, so I just carry I just started moving around and check it periodically. It all looks the same. Pretty sure there's still a big chunk of ice in there. Not a good contrast between the ice and the liquid. Right, it looks pretty, um, I guess, homogenous. <laughs> yeah. as, as it thaws more, you can start to tell the difference between. I don't know if you can see it. Barely. You can see, see a difference between the, the ice and the, the liquid. All right. Yeah, I'd say there's about a, a chunk this wide still in there, so it's almost done. Okay. So this, is, sorry, I'm just going to move it quickly without showing you too much because it's so hard to see. Yeah, plus you don't want the cells to die at this point. Yeah. So at this point, if you're really, if your cells are really delicate, you can sort of add them dropwise or like spread this out on the plate and add fresh media drop wise, but these are pretty hardy, so I'm just going to add them right in. I'm going to take some fresh media and just add this in to recover any cells that might be sort of on the sides. Good. Alright, so then at this point, I'm just going to give them a little like that. Right. At this point you can spin it down to get rid of everything and then add fresh media if you want to. Uh, we're just going to plate these right now. So there should be, you know, about a million cells per mil, or a million cells total. Um, these are passage two when they were frozen down. So, oh, so then, yeah, go ahead, sorry. So these um, 3T3, they're, they're, they're okay with having the cryo um, Jacket in there? Okay. They should be. They're very hardy cells. Interesting. They okay. grow. They grow like wildfire. They grow forever. Okay, got it. Uh, 
Interesting. Yeah. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. What you're no, saying no, before? No, no, no. I mean, it, and it's just very dilute by the time it's in in there. Right. Um, so we'll do two flasks, and then we'll see how they do. Um, you know, they'll probably be ready if everything goes well. They'll be ready to pass it pretty soon or ready to use. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just going to label these flasks. We can label on the side here. I just happen to do these on the top. And these were pa passage two. And when they were frozen, we technically haven't passaged them again, so I keep them at passage two. And today's date. Let's put your initials on here for now. Okay. Alright, and then I typically do 10 mils media per flask in these T75s. Now you can have a little, you know, a little variation in that. This part we can look at them under the microscope where they're just going to be floating. Uh, come back and check later today, and they should be you know, a few hours. They should be adhering. I like to use the phase contrast. Other people like to use the bright field. Um, so this filter is for the phase contrast. On the next magnification, uh, just make sure this is covered when we're not using it, so this doesn't get in there. And I'm just going to wipe down. Stage. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, those are just because you know, they're not the side of the hood. But we try to keep this microscope for tissue culture only and keep it pretty clean. Yeah, so would you say like 80% confluency is a good time to like passage it again? Yeah, 70, 80%. Mm -hmm. um, these ones, it can be a little hard to tell and they grow so fast, you're like, oh, they're like 50% confluent and you come back the next day and they're like 100%. <laughs> so it's not gonna, it's not, they're not too sensitive if you do them a little early or not. Uh, but that's the idea. And then in terms of passage, um, you know, what to see them out when you're passaging them, 
typically you can do like they say like a one to ten or a one to twenty split. Um, so depending on how many you know blasts you pass this down, or you 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 know liberate the cells and pumps in into the passage, uh, diluting that volume by one ten or twenty and seeing again. Um, and then when we get to that point, I can definitely go over that process with you and Arvin too, just to, just to confirm. Uh, like where the trypsin is and neutralizing and all that stuff. Uh, so I just tape this back up so I can keep this as right. clean as possible. This, I mean, there's a little bit of media left in here. Um, so for, for getting rid of biohazardous liquids, I'm going to go in and get a um, glass pipette. Here, so on here. Um, in the other hood, it's a, a knob in the turn. Right. Where that just so you don't put into the wire as you can. All right. Uh, just make sure you turn this off when you're done using it. Okay. Keep an eye on this. Uh, if the level gets up to the full line, this needs to be dumped and changed. Because uh, we start with bleach down here. It sort of you know, neutralizes everything in here, and we can just dump it down the sink, and then fill before we put it back in, add new, more bleach to the line, keep the bleach underneath the sink. All right, so we're done with that. All right, this goes into the sharps containers that we keep up in each hood. Everything gets taken out of the hood except the uh, the box of the um, gulls. And then this is all biohazard waste. It's just cells, the media, or the media with FPS. Alright. Even though I touch stuff outside of here, I'm just moving everything out. It's okay, I'm not gonna spray my hands down. This hood, the UV light comes in automatically. Uh, for this hood over here, you have to you know, turn it on manually. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm pretty familiar with this hood actually. Oh yeah? Yeah. Okay, similar to one you used before. I think it's literally the exact same okay. one, just looking at it. Okay. Um, this we'll put back in the, in the fridge here. Uh, let's see for places. It's a little full right now, but you, you could put it in my bin right here. Okay. Uh, right now, sometimes I have a couple bottles of media. Right now, I only have one, so there's plenty of room in there. And then we'll just put this down, right? Uh, any questions about any of that? Um, no, that's a pretty good demonstration. Nice review. Um, is there? Can I take a look at your um, hemocytometer really quickly too? Sure. I, 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 we don't need to use it today, obviously, but uh, just no, so I know where it is. Yeah. Uh, let me just put this stuff away. And Like the traditional acetometer mm -hmm. here, um, little slide. If you need more slides, uh, I pull my, my cover slips for the garage right here. Uh, if you want to, I like to use this little counter here. Right. Uh, keep tripping blue here. Uh, just a la carte to go in and out of, and if we need more, then we have this container. Uh, we also have an automatic cell counter. Which is actually pretty easy to use, but I just I'm sort of old school like I like getting out of Um But I can show you how to use this sometime if you want. You have these special slides. You just add in your media with tripping or your cell suspension with tripping blue. 
put it in here, press a couple of buttons, and it gives you a readout. Oh, cool. So, I've heard of these things. So, I've never, never tried yeah. one. <laughs> they, I mean, you have to sort of calibrate it and check it if you're starting off with a new cell type just to make sure it's accurate. Um, and then we have some, some stocks, some non-sterile pipettes to use for the for medicine time right here. Mm -hmm. So you'll have to go in and out of the uh, Yep. Cool, thank you. Um, no I'm trying to think of anything else. No, I think oh, that pretty much covers it then. Um, I think it's, I know where everything is now. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, when it comes time to um, passage the cells, I mean, it can be that you or anything, just to go over that, for, I mean, for our sake too. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, if there's any questions or problems, uh, you have swipe access for the lab? Um, I don't know, actually. I was going to say, if you need to come in and 